Hey all you creative people, I'm Miriam Joshua, the founder of Woke Culture. Joining me on today's conversation uh, are two amazing worship leaders, songwriters, music producers and visionaries of India. Hi guys, I'm Nehemiah Kulatungan. I am the A&R at Bridge Music and I also am the worship director at City Church based in Cardiff, Wales. I am Sam Pasula. I'm the founder of Bridge Music and I'm also the pastor at JPL Church in California and I'm so excited to be on this podcast. Uh, looking forward to it. I'm sure many of you don't know but uh, Nehemiah who we lovingly call as Nimo. I'm sure many of you know him as Nemo. Uh, we go way back. Uh, we know each other. Our parents study together and I think that's it's been a very um, beautiful long connection. A lot of beautiful memories as yeah. children. Of course there's a long gap in between but so good to connect. Yeah and see what God's doing in your life. Yeah. And yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's jump right in. Um, Sam, who is the real Nemo? Wow, that's a very good question. I was, I was thinking you're gonna ask me that question about <laughs> myself, but um, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about Nemo is he's a servant leader. In fact, even this morning, I was just asking him for a, hey bro, you have some food cream, my food's kind of, it's kind of feeling dry and he goes he takes the the cream and starts putting on my uh, feet and i'm like you you these days you know we see people washing feet in public and making a public stunt out of it there's very less people who who doesn't seek for validation from what they do and i think nemo is one of them mm -hmm. i've seen him work in the background so many times even for season three he's a huge part of what season three was but he had to do all sacrificially being in uk um, and I think it's just so precious to see people like Nemo and, and just call him a friend. It's just an honor. Oh, that is so precious. Yes. <laughs> and we're also meeting each other after three and a half years. So, wow. yeah, it's just yeah. amazing to be in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> so good, so good. Um, Nemo, <laughs> who is the real Sam Alex? Sam, um, this is an easy one. And uh, I, I, I just, it's just amazing to have Sam as an example in your life because he is just like Jesus. Uh, the way he talks, the way he thinks, it really makes me think, like he renews my mind in regular conversations, someone with somebody or the way he handles a situation, the way he manages something, or the way he pours out and I'm like, or the way he withdraws or everything about him. And I'm like, wow. And at first you don't get it, but the more you're closer to him, you get it and you're like, oh wow, that's amazing. So I just love that he has that example. Like, I don't think I, I've said this on some of my Instagram posts. I've said, you know, if you want an example, live example of what it is like to be like Jesus, look at this guy. He's really, yeah, sweet that way. <laughs> no, for sure, man, for sure. Yeah, and I think it's just so important to honor people, uh, you know, and I think sometimes it's mm. good to, to for people to know what you think about them. You know? yeah. So I think this is really, yeah. really yeah. important. I, I think Nemo chooses to see the Jesus in me and ignore you know, the worst parts of me. So. <laughs> like he sees the servant leader in me. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Amazing. So why don't you share a little bit about your parents, your background, your early years? I think we both are PKs. Oh. I think you would consider more as MK in missionary skills. <laughs> <laughs> I think we fall in the same category. But I... You know, I think I've learned a lot from my parents. Um, I am what I am because of them um, and everything that they taught me. Grateful, uh, but also along the way, I had to figure out my own journey of how I can pursue God in my own way. Mm. Because sometimes you can get into religion of just doing things, uh, customs and culture, and then you had to mm. break out of that to find out how can I make mm. God personal. So that was a very interesting uh, journey for me. I don't know, Nemo, you want to add? Yeah, for me, I guess my parents are missionaries and they get to travel a lot. Different uh, to, to a pastor's kid, uh, maybe you have to serve in that same community, church, location, city all your life. But for us, we were traveling every Sunday to a new city or a new village or a new town. And so that probably was good in some ways, uh, but tougher in some ways because it was so inconsistent. Like our lifestyle was like always on the move, mm. uh, shifting houses, shifting cities, shifting schools, shifting where we live, all based on where the ministry is at. Uh, you know, so every two, three years we've had to move, move, move. 
So growing up, if you ask me overall, it did feel like that's really tough because uh, I never had deeper connections in any one school or one area or one friendship. Or mm. I can't think of one like close friend who stayed throughout or one house that I loved mm. or one school. So three years was the max we'd move. Um, mm. So, but then now as a missionary who's traveling and who's traveled out of India now to serve in the UK as a missionary, it's amazing. I've realized it's helped me so much. So certain things that didn't make sense then make real good sense now. So I'm really grateful for that life. Yeah. I mean, I totally, I think, I mean, growing up, I'm also PK. Uh, but yeah, I think God loves those seasons in our lives to just prepare us for the bigger, better and, and, and the the plan that he has for us in the future and I really feel like I mean there were there were years where I used to look back and complain and and, mm. and really yeah. um, I mean because it's not easy being a pastor's kid mm. definitely not right and because everybody is just constantly looking at you like you need to be the perfect child the perfect Christian yeah. and it's so hard but I feel I mean there are good things that are also the bad, you know the terrible things that you have yeah. to go through yeah. uh, and I'm sure you both have, definitely yeah. have lots to say we can do a separate podcast on that one <laughs> Yeah, but but I think overall, I think God allows that. Like even I was just talking to uh, you know Nimu yesterday, and he was talking about how you know this whole bridge tour. Uh, he, you know, all your sessions have been back to back, back to back, back to back, and I realized that I am so much like that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like being a pastor's kid or a missionary's kid, knowingly or unknowingly, you're programmed to be like yeah. that, right? Possibly. And it was so funny because when only when he said said it, I realized that oh my goodness. Know, and it's a bad, it's a good thing, you know, and it's a bad thing because not everyone in my team can run like me. Yeah. Like they get burnt out sometimes, right, you know. Right. And I'm That's running right. way more faster than the rest of them. Yeah. But I yeah. feel like being a pastor's That's kid and a missionary's yeah. kid kind of prepares you for that. Right? I really think so. Like default yeah. preparation. So yeah. I mean, do you guys yeah. want to add to that? Or, yeah, yeah. My my dad's like you're in church every day, almost like you know. There was not a Sunday I can remember I missed church. Mm -hmm. um, church is in uh, not going to church is an option. It's not an option for us. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even when we were sick, my dad's like, "No, get to church." Yeah. Um, I, I could count off my finger in my whole life how many times I didn't go to church. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that um, somebody said this. You know, in in today's generation, church is so optional for a lot of believers mm. um, and I'm realizing I'm grateful for my parents for this um, somebody said if ch if church is optional to you it will be um, unnecessary for your kids mm. what is optional to you today will be unnecessary for your kids tomorrow wow. so true. Um, and because for my parents it was not an option wow. I was like no we're going there and today I feel weird like I think the gathering of the saints is so powerful so true. and I and I cannot miss that so I'm yeah. just grateful for my parents for investing that in me uh, yeah. even when I wasn't liking it yeah. uh, today like you said I don't burn out like I have so much more yeah. energy to push and I'm like how do I pour this into other people and sometimes you can't it's just yeah. you know the grace that you're you've received from yeah. your parents true so yeah. true I don't think I can add anything to that. So true. <laughs> so true. Yeah. No, but I love what you what you just shared. What is optional for you becomes unnecessary for your children, right? Yeah. I mean, that is so true. Yeah. That is so true. I think that's something that you can actually sit and you know spend some time just thinking about. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Correct, but that's yeah. that's yeah. so so true. Uh, what what are the what what were the challenges growing up as a pastor's kid? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think unrealistic expectations from. Uh, us uh, as kids, the yeah. family itself uh, was almost like you weren't allowed to be human. <laughs> uh, there was no room for error, uh, mm -hmm. and this uh, expectation of perfection mm -hmm. um, when it comes to uh, your how you carry yourself, what you do, how you respond to you know difficult situations, everything. Mm -hmm. So a high level of maturity was expected from a child. So mm -hmm. uh, stuff that you learn over time and after, you know, a lot of character building and uh, a lot of growth. So I think that kind of unrealistic expectation probably did was challenging to grow up with because you always didn't feel good enough. Uh, mm -hmm. So you always felt like you'd fall short. Mm -hmm. and which probably in the long run was good. You 
start to depend on God a lot more and you're like God I just can't do this without you um, but I guess that pressure of performance the pressure of being the best and the mm-hmm. of trying to be better than yesterday all the time mm-hmm. uh, probably was challenging I yeah but there's again pros to it so yeah, but yeah, yeah. that was probably my, my story at least I mean and that was perfectly said i would just say the same thing performance um uh, the pressure to perform all the time Fe- feeling not enough most of the times and um it's not the pressure my parents put on me it's the pressure that people put yeah, on yeah, me yeah. because i'm a pastor's child yeah hey, being a pastor's kid how would you do this how yeah. could you do this how yeah. so i go to school i'm a pastor's kid <laughs> i'm not sam i'm yeah. not i can't be a normal kid you know i can be a normal guy so for a moment it wa- i wanted to be rebellious mm. because i just i was just tired after after my schooling i was just in my college i just want to be that bill mm. uh, like i just um i don't care anymore i want to go to college where nobody knows me yeah, yeah, i want to yeah. do things that nobody would ever do i want to bunk college i want to do this I, i think i was just trying to get <laughs> like, to that right uh, uh, like i think it's just i was just trying to do it in my own way and just um finally figured out the balance of like okay and and I'm still like you know i think it, for a long time it has affected my relationship with god yeah mm. because that's how i saw god as like mm. you know he's a slave master like mm. you better do this now if you don't do this if you don't go to church and if you don't do this yeah. then uh you're going to have a bad day or you're yeah. going to you're going to make people feel sad and yeah. so there was a lot of uh expectation as a pastor's kid that's yeah. put on us mm. um unintentionally you yeah, know yeah. but yet still damaging um and and i think i'm just grateful for our spiritual fathers yeah. in that moment like you know sometimes it's it's not easy to receive from your um flesh fathers mm. and i think that's where spiritual fathers come in and kind of give you a different perspective of who god is and i think that was a huge huge shift in my life wow. yeah yeah not not saying my physical father isn't like i think um i'm just super grateful and uh thankful for my yeah. parents yeah. they there's nothing i can do that will ever make justice mm. to all the sacrifices yeah. they've made for That's me true. and That's i am what i am today because of them yeah grateful um yeah i think it's just mostly the pressure that comes from people that was yeah. weighing on me a lot mm. yeah 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 i think like for me since i am called nehemiah and for those of you who know nehemiah in the bible Uh, he's this guy who rebuilds something that's broken and he's doing all of this hard work so all my life i've imagined that's that's my role i'm going to do a lot of hard work and rebuild everything that's broken keep rebuilding keep rebuilding so i kind of grew up with let's live up to your name so you have to work hard you have to rebuild things mm-hmm. you have to always be available to rebuild things so anyway there's something broken i'm like trying to step in and even if it even if i wasn't invited i'm like i need to step in <laughs> learn a few lessons there but uh, but yeah just that that's been me carrying my name and thinking that's my call until i understood that my actually means comforted by god wow and it has wow. nothing to do with performance mm-hmm. or acts or service it was just you already loved Mm. you're already comforted and that shift was much when i'm much older so of course all my life if you say how were you young days mm. you're trying to perform mm. and then now lately i'm like i'm loved by god yeah, yeah. i'm wow. comforted by god so that is so yeah. precious yeah i mean yeah, i think uh, growing up as a pastor's kid i think we've all all of us and I, yeah. i i remember growing up saying i will become anything other than a pastor okay. i don't want to have anything <laughs> to do with mission, no, ministry okay. do, so. yeah i said i don't want to have anything to do with ministry i'm just anything other than that you know but it's funny how god just allows you to go wherever he draws you back and he says this is where you're meant yeah. to be yeah. right and it's amazing that no matter what you know i think i'm sure our parents prayed for us and yeah. i'm sure we are pro- we are products oh, of their yeah, prayer absolutely. of yeah. their prayer without a doubt and but the thing is also it's it's for parents who are really struggling i mean it's just so important for them also to know you know what end of the day no matter what how bad your kids make mess up god is going to bring them back to mm. their to his original plan yeah. and i really feel like my goodness i mean after all these years i'm finally living what i was made for yeah and i'm sure the two of you agree with that yeah, as well yeah yeah my my ministry began when i forgive my parents for what i didn't understand wow 
like I always like I was like you did this to me mm. because of you I went through all of this because of you I went through all of this and one day God just started revealing the truth about my parents and how much they loved us yes. and I think they were just doing the best they can to love us the best they can you know mm. it's they, they don't know any better and mm. um, he would just uh, when I went to uh, uh, my ministry school um, I was away from my parents that's when God would just like uh, show me the times when I was a kid um, not just when I was a kid even when I grew up we used to have a we used to live in one small house everybody used to sleep in the same room um, and my parents would wait till we all go to sleep and they would cry and pray for us every day mm. and and it was like you forget those moments that you're calling them and it just gave me this beautiful um, gratitude towards yeah. them and I was like, I'm so grateful for my parents today because of their prayers, because mm. of their sacrifices. I'm really standing on their sacrifices, really. It's mm. not what I've built yeah. for myself. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in that may have, I, I've, I've stopped being bitter about dad hurts, mom hurts, yeah. you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. We, we all have those. Yeah, yeah, Everybody, yeah. be it um, uh, if you are in um, the church, if you're a PK or not, you all have father hurts, right? And I think if you are wanting to serve God, you cannot serve God without forgiving your parents, really. Like you have to come from a place of like being healed. Mm -hmm. If you come from a place of hurt, you're going to always carry that hurt wherever yeah. you go. So, I mean, I understood the father's heart way more when I forgive yeah. my parents. So that was a huge one for me. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, that was the first step in my ministry. Really? That's amazing. I actually didn't know that about you. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, do you want to No, I, to that? I just want to say that I had exactly that. Yeah. Because in I 2014, know. there was an altar call to forgive your parents. And I, and I stood up and I responded. And I remember I was like wailing and screaming mm. and crying and surrendering and forgiving. And suddenly some a weight lifted. And it, it was like a heavy weight. It was probably, I don't know. And then immediately after that, I got to, I could never see them like they were against me. And I realized they're always with me and for me. Mm. And that was the shift for me to see God as a father. Yeah. And that's so, I, I didn't know we had that yeah. experience. But I guess that's a common experience in, in yeah, all of yeah. our lives as believers. Yeah, and I think it's just so important to talk about it because... Mm. We, I mean, sometimes we think we're the only ones who are going through this. We're the only ones who are, you know, struggling with these issues. Yeah. But I remember growing up thinking that my dad never loved me. <clears throat> and, and I remember when God met me in one season and, you know, God said, I remember, you know, he kept um, uh, affirming his love over and over again. That same week, God took me back to a place where I found this bookmark where my dad had written, I love you. And I was like, oh my goodness, why did my dad even say that? You know, so that was like, a, so that's the problem, right? I think the enemy comes so hard, especially creative people in, 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 our, in our mind space where he just lies and just that deception. I mean, just to look, now looking back, I'm like, oh my goodness, where did I go wrong? I mean, yeah, they've always yeah. loved me. Yeah. I'm sure they've always loved us as yeah. their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to see how God in his perfect time mm -hmm. just brings everything back together, yeah. restores, heals, and makes things so beautiful. And wow. yeah, I mean, beautiful. wow. Thank, thank you for sharing that. So, uh, I think that is really, really yeah. beautiful. You know, one thing that I've realized uh, off late, you know, especially as, as a community when, um, you know, early this year when we had come together and we were praying and I felt like the Lord was telling me that he's going to birth revival in and through the creative platform. And even as he revealed this to me, um, God said, look around at, at pastor's kids and missionary's kids as well. Yeah, thank you. And he said, um, see where they are planted right now. Ah. And that blew my mind because many of us are in the creative space doing something really radical and different. And the wow. way the church, I mean, I feel like God is changing the way um, ministry is going to look like mm -hmm. in the future, mm -hmm. right? And I really believe that when God said he's going to birth revival in and through the creative platform, I believe he's already, he has already begun. Look yeah. at what you guys have done in the last couple of weeks here in India with Bridge 
I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. The revival is, it, I mean, revival is in the air and just, yeah. and people are able to connect with God, have a God encounter mm -hmm. through creative ways like never mm -hmm. before. Do you guys want to add to that? I mean, that's something we've been really going after. Um, on this tour, we call it Empower Tour. Mm -hmm. And um, I think sometimes we make, um, I think the, the word creative expressions have been suppressed so much. In, in today's generation. Mm. Um, I always say you can have a worship night without word, without testimonies, without paint, without art, without dance, without all of this, but you cannot have a worship night without singing. Mm. And I felt like the Holy Spirit say, you idolize singing, you worship singing, you don't worship me. Mm. And, and God's just redefining what worship is. Mm. Like worship is simply your response to what he's done. I mean, we, we complicate it so much. Um, but what happens when somebody who can sing wants to worship? Mm. Um, I, I'll share the story. Um, the, there's a person um, who's not in the Lord, um, um, a person's a DJ. I can't share many details, but um, like, and, and then we were doing this outreach event and I said, hey, um, would you want to come and do DJ for our worship night? Mm -hmm. Which was so like out for, for church folks, that's like <laughs> sin in steroids. Like yeah. you're saying DJ in church. And I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like we should. I said, go look up some worship songs, see what you can do. Mm -hmm. so, so she went, did, a, did her own search on worship songs and all of that. At the end of the event, she came up to me and she said, I never thought I could express myself to God like that. Wow. And what we've, what we've done in church because of these strongholds of one creative expression, mm. we've, we stole people from expressing themselves creatively. Wow. Yeah. And that one person, she found her way back to God because of her expression. Yeah. I think we've, what we've done is we've idolized one expression yeah. where we actually make them worship us. Mm -hmm. It really is that like, you know, I'm a singer. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking, it's hard for me to talk about this because all it's like, well, you <laughs> sing. Um, and I'm like, but that's my expression. Yeah. Just because I'm talking about other expressions, I'm not going to suppress mine, mm -hmm. but I'm also intentionally looking at like, there's so many other expressions right now mm -hmm. that are being suppressed. And what God said is like, Sam, you stole people from worshiping me mm. uh, because you made it about the act mm. of singing. And mm. uh, we, uh, we, I, he had, I had to understand the difference between expression and worship, that worship is not an expression. You use expression to worship God. Mm. Um, and we've been just like really focusing on that one thing. It's like, mm. even though we are going with our expression, yeah. But there's so many other expressions that are not heard. For example, this production is an expression. Yeah. A lot of people don't see that. Like um, our sound guys, they work all night long to make sure that our expression is heard. Mm. Um, our lighting guys, you know, I mean, um, name it. Like there's so many unheard expressions of worship yeah. that, um, I mean, they don't have stages like we do, you know, like singers and dancers mm. sometimes. Mm. But um, I think just being more intentional about uh, uh, understanding and realizing, man, there's other expressions in the room. Mm. Um, there's other people who are willing to express, but they don't feel their place in the church. So they go to the secular mm. um, industry and they express themselves there. Um, the reason people are in the secular industry only mm. is because the church hasn't made space for it. Exactly. Um, trying to differentiate secular and sacred and trying to make these um, uh, yeah, differences, yeah. Uh, differentiations because I think the church has has really disowned what needs to be ours. I exactly. think um, we, we stop making space for other expressions. Mm -hmm. So the enemy comes in and mm -hmm. says, well, if you don't do it there, do it here. And because enemy cannot create. Yeah. He can only distort what's being created. Exactly. So when we steal people from creating what God's put inside of them, mm. 
the enemy says okay you they didn't let you create i'll i'll i'll, I'll use you and then the, he distorts mm. what was supposed to be created so in a right mm. uh setting and now what was supposed to be holy is not mm. um somebody said perversion is simply the wrong version <laughs> uh there's a lot of perversion enemy creates perversion through what's beautiful and uh, i don't know if you want to add something no, that's yeah that's like so well said i really yeah. um i think this is something that i would like to add to what you said i i really feel that a creative expression mm-hmm. is a gift that god has given each one of us Absolutely. to express our love to him and mm. that becomes our love language yeah. where he connects so to point. us and we get to connect with him mm. and and i think there's something so beautiful that happens when you discover your creative expression yeah, so good and uh, for a few it can be singing for a few it can be anything at all like you know the dj right mm. and i think it's important for us to stop and really come to that place and say hey what is my creative expression what is my love language Mm-hmm. And I think if we can connect with God so in that space of authenticity mm-hmm. then it completely transforms our so life good. and the way we uh look at our call look at what we are made for our purpose everything mm-hmm. changes mm-hmm. like do you want to Yeah no I wanted you to share about the dance because that was really <laughs> precious because yeah I think uh, you share about how dance is your personal expression of worship and Yeah, I, I want to hear a little bit. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, this is something that I personally discovered uh, that for me, my creative expression, mm-hmm. uh, or rather, during a season of brokenness and guilt and shame, mm-hmm. I'm not a dancer, but God gave me that gift of expression, and I learned how to dance, and the Holy Spirit taught me how to dance. And I, I've not, I mean, I'm not trained. I've not gone for any training at all. But it was that just that space of connecting with God, and yeah. God just just helping me to release. um you know all that shame and guilt that i was carrying as a pastor's kid and god just restored honor and beauty mm. and that's where i met god like i cannot even explain every time i would dance in my room that's where i met god and god met me yeah. and it was just a space of just healing so i mean today what i what what i do on stage is just an outflow an overflow of what happened in the bedroom come on and i rem- i know for sure that i've spent more time in my bedroom dancing than what i've done on stage so yeah. and that and that creative expression dance is my love language and so when i dance i just express my love to him yeah and and i receive his love like it's just such a two way thing right yeah. you know so for me it's more than uh, more Stage. than a creative expression Stage. it's just my love language of just being yeah. able to fall in love with him and just for him to love yeah. me yeah. so what yeah. people come and ask me to is um, hey i want to sing i want to worship i'm like yeah go ahead we we'll stop with you Who's talking to you? Like, <laughs> go ahead. I'm like, no, but I want to do it on stage. Mm. And I think, I think when you start on stage, you have absolutely a wrong heart. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think you you abuse it. Yeah. You pervert mm. it mm. when you do it for people. When you do it for stage, I'm like, you're trying to look for validation. Yeah. Rather than understanding, you've been already validated by God. Yeah. Uh, and the only person. who can validate you fully is god yeah and i think it took me a long time to understand that mm. cuz somewhere i even i got those mixed up like the the most freeing thing that happened to me is not caring about people's <laughs> opinion yeah. yeah be it good or bad i take the criticism <laughs> um and i see if i can work on it mm. but if i can i know i'm god is pleased with me mm. and i don't have to um like numbers don't mess with my head anymore mm-hmm. um yeah I, and and i think that has been a huge because the expression that god gave you for is for your freedom exactly mm-hmm. but we've turned that into a curse when you make it about people pleasing yeah um and i think i love what you shared that you dance in the room more than you dance on stage yeah um yeah. um i got to a point where i couldn't sing alone for a long time i was yeah. like mm-hmm. I got so used to only singing for people that I didn't know what what it means to sing alone. Mm-hmm. I never enjoyed my expression for myself. Mm-hmm. Um and God is like why are you doing this? What's the point of all of this, you know? Mm-hmm. So even, you know, just a lot of times the hardest question God asked me was he he asked me Sam, would you still love me mm-hmm. just as much as you do right now more? 
if I told you that you will never have an opportunity to sing again in public, mm. that you can't uh, speak on stage ever again, mm. wow. that you only get to do this alone. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, God. And then, <laughs> and then there came a season mm. where no matter where I went, it was not working. Very rarely you will see me not sing in the key. No. I would start off completely off. It was like there was, I, I could feel mm. his grace lift off of me on, on stage, mm. leading stage, whatever stage, stage stuff. Mm. And I stopped for seven months. It was the hardest season. I realized how much I love stage more than uh, my worship to God and I think that was a very precious season of my life is to realign myself to worship God mm -hmm. um, through my expression when nobody's watching me like I just love sitting and playing keys yeah like sometimes I don't have words so I just sit and play music yeah mm -hmm. and it's the most satisfying thing and I, I'm like it's not that I'm perfect there's no pressure of being perfect mm -hmm. uh, there's no pressure of mm, getting the chords right you know you, you, you can yeah. play whatever and he's just pleased with you right um, yeah. and I just I love that and then when I go on stage I lead from a place of knowing he's already pleased with me yeah. Yeah. and and if you look at the life of Jesus he does that too you know before he did any miracles signs wonders nothing mm -hmm. the father opened up the heavens and said he's my son in whom I'm well pleased everything he did he did mm -hmm. from that place yeah. not to please God, yeah. exactly. not, and I think Jesus is our model end of the day. Yeah, yeah. 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 Amazing. No, I was just something that Sam uh, shares from Bill Johnson's quote, which is, "If you live by the praises of men, if you live by the praises of men, you'll die by the criticism. You'll die by the criticism." That's yeah. so powerful. And, so and, true. That. So and true. I think that just shifted everything for us when we we just don't long for that appreciation from people anymore. That it doesn't define anything and yeah we, we, we appreciate it we honor it yeah. we, we just go because that's dishonor too you know doesn't mean yeah, yeah, of yeah like you know i think but i if you think they're doing this to me is yeah, the problem yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like um I, I want to give something to the lord when i go alone mm -hmm. by kolkata i was there I don't know if I can, ever, if you and I can ever control how people see us, be it bad or good. good <laughs> um, like, how do you control it? Mm -hmm. The only way they can change their perception is when they get to know us. And yeah. most of them, they won't. Yeah. Uh, they just know us as, oh man, these guys are famous, like this is awesome invested. Uh, when in Kolkata, I was like, I can't believe I'm touching you. I can't believe oh I'm God. like, oh gosh. And, and, and for a moment, I just wanted to like, just go in my room and just sit and not go out. Oh, right. um, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to kill this whole celebrity culture. Mm. And then God's like, yeah, you're trying to kill one thing and do another celebrity culture because celebrities don't connect. Mm. <laughs> so you don't have an option to not connect with the crowd. Mm. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I'm, mean, we're still figuring this out. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, so. when, when that guy came, I was like, I think what's special for me is just pointing them to God one. Yeah. In that moment, hey man, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, can I pray with you? Mm -hmm. uh, right? You know, rather than just like, I know you want a photo. Can I pray with you first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just caring for them. And then wow. in my quiet time, I go back and I just have this beautiful conversation. I love these conversations with God. Mm -hmm. I said, God, remember that guy? He said, I can't believe I'm touching you. I think he was talking about you. <laughs> yeah. um, wow. We both know that he was really talking about you. It was not wow. Me. And yeah. just humbling myself before the Lord uh, when you go back yeah, home. I yeah. think it's just the most humbling thing you can Yeah, give all that glory um, back here. Yeah. Because he's the thing sometimes, it's all God, it's, it's glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. <laughs> but you don't really mean it. Like, exactly. you know, and he, they don't even get it. Yeah. But yeah. for me, I want to take that my worship to God in my mm -hmm. quiet time is taking all these praises that I received from men and giving it to God. Yeah. And it's like, God, this is never, I'm just a donkey walking on the praises of people. Yeah. You know, I just point up, I, yeah. people are doing what they're doing because I'm hosting the presence mm. of God. That's all. Yeah. Uh, what an honor, what a privilege, you know? Yeah. I don't know how we. No, one thing I add to that is also in, in the, in the midst of that also do like, like 
say thank you and like take it also yeah because yeah. we do be like oh it wasn't me at all i didn't even open my <laughs> mouth it wasn't my voice it's just the spirit voice came out no it was it was your voice god used your voice exactly and say thank you and then take it to god yeah because uh, that again you know takes us into this illusion of oh yeah but then there's actually it's humility with a different face that's not actually sports humility there yeah the yeah. humility is simply not having an opinion about yourself mm. sacrifice it's not saying i'm i'm small i like the way you say it's not thinking less of uh, it's uh, not thinking less of you it's not thinking more of you it's thinking what god thinks of you exactly right and exactly. if you can't we we either become victims of what people think humility is yeah. like oh i just i'm just nobody i'm just a flower fading away yeah, yeah. i'm just this i'm just that i'm like well imagine you make a robot and the robot walks around saying i'm just nobody i'm just this like, <laughs> <laughs> how is that ever going to give me glory you know yeah. um yeah. but how how would god ever receive glory if we are walking around mm-hmm. like saying nothing people? yeah but again the extreme of it is like i am entitlement is a huge yeah. thing right we we've been talking so much about that today in creative i mean i don't even know if you want to go there but um i think a lot of creatives are struggling today mm-hmm. because of entitlement yeah yeah um i they should have done this for me 90% of creatives don't make money mm. they're broke yeah they are not they move from one job to the other job to the other job they are not planted they are mm. not rooted mm. uh, because of entitlement mm. and offense mm. i always say every time you see people getting offended mm. it's a problem of entitlement yeah 99.99% of the time if somebody is offended they are entitled yeah and i I've, i've sacrificed my need mm. over and over to get something from people be it my neo mix <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm entitled for an India mix. Mm. Hey, my India mix wasn't good, man. <laughs> like that's why da 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 da. And and it's so easy to get offended when somebody else is pouring everything out. Yeah. 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 No, um, I I agree with you because I think we are <coughs> we're living in a time and season where people uh have forgotten what it is to just serve with a heart of just not receiving. Yeah. but just being planted like you said yeah. i think it's just so important where i feel god uh, uh, plants us in different seasons and if we are faithful where he plants us mm. only then do are we i think god kind of prunes and builds us so that we can shine and grow mm-hmm. uh, but provided we are willing to stay planted mm. stay committed stay and grounded pruned. yeah and, and be ready <laughs> you know be ready to be pruned yeah um, Yes, I mean, I think that's something that's just so important. But I mean, I want to ask you this question, even when you were, you know, sharing all this. Um, so, when was the? I mean, how did the transition happen from just being a, a worship team or a worship band to actually where you you all are right now? And also, I want to ask another question along with that. I mean, it's it's exciting to be the face, right? To be that. face and just enjoy all the glamour and everything and people think it's fantastic mm-hmm. but behind all that there's some painful stories <laughs> and i can say that because i think i mean i've been in, through different seasons recently and just like been through a lot and i'm like i yeah. I, i don't want to do this can i not do this lord can i just sit at your yeah. feet drink from your cup and just listen to your heartbeat i don't want anything else right yeah. but so what was that transition and what were those challenges that you faced Uh it's all nice now but what's the background story that many people don't know? Yeah. 